Hi, my name is Stephen McGee and I'm the author of Toxic Health. And we're here today to talk about some of the health techniques and how I develop them that you can use for human health in radio frequency fields. Now, radio frequency fields have become the plague of our generation. And the autism rates for the past decade have been following almost identically the rise of cell phone towers and cell phones in the USA. And one of the things I noticed in my home a few years ago was I started growing the Diphenbachia. And the Diphenbachia typically looks like this, has very large leaves. Those leaves are typically the size of your hand. And in this particular variety, it has a great deal of patterning. Now I use two varieties. And this is the other variety, again, has very large leaves, typically the size of your hand, and has a light interior with a much darker green exterior. Now, when all my wireless devices were in service, I was getting growth that looked like this. So this, believe it or not, is the same plant. It's a Diphenbachia. And one of the characteristics of Diphenbachias are many plants that are grown in high radio frequency fields are these really tiny, small, shiny leaves. Now, when I took my wireless devices out of service, the plant growth changed. And the plant growth is now a little bit larger, a little bit more patterning, but it's still retarded. It's not the way the Dyphon back here is supposed to look. And uh, yeah, if you've got a Dyphon back here that looks like this, you likely have radio frequency problems going on at your property. So as you can see, we have some much healthier looking specimens here. And I managed to grow these over the last year. In fact, many of them were a surprise as I was running various experiments regarding the Diefenbachia. And my experiments in 2013 started to show that you can actually grow the Diefenbachia in a high radio frequency field. So we're gonna go through these plants and we're going to show you the techniques that are outlined in the third edition of Toxic Health on how to build radiation resistance into the human body. And we're going to start with these. So, as you can see, this one is growing with a battery. And that battery has its negative terminal connected to the metal pot. And the positive is actually going off into the stem of the plant. And that's how we got this one to grow. And its neighbor is very, very similar. So you can see we got the large growth as we had on this one. Almost identical looking plant. And that's because it also has a battery on the bottom of it. And that's a single cell battery at one and a half volts. And the positive in this case is connected to the pot and the negative is connected to the stem. Now you can create the battery effect in the human by using these. Now, zinc, copper, iron, magnesium, and B12 are all metals. So if you put different metals into the human body and then you add salt, you create a battery. And the human body develops half a volt on the body when you do that. So relative to the grounded feet, you'll find when you start taking these supplements in the right doses, that you end up with half a volt at your fingertips and pretty much everywhere all over the body. So that's how you translate this experiment into the human domain. Now let's take a look at this one. So this one is growing very well also. So how do we achieve it? Well, the answer's down here. So we actually grounded the plant. So you can see we've got foil strips going into the bottom of the pot. And the pot is sitting on a base that was wrapped in foil. And it was sitting on a tiled floor. So this is the earthing technique. So many, many people 
are reporting success with the earthing technique. And when you get it right, it appears that it generates really good growth patterns in the diaphragm when it's in high radio frequency fields. So if you can identify a non-electrified floor, it appears that the earthing technique does actually work when you walk barefoot on a non-electrified conductive floor. So the next plant is this one. So how do we get this one to grow? It's looking very healthy. I think you'll be surprised. So let's see what this one did. So this one has a battery powered watch in its roots with a second hand. So it's actually embedded in the soil. You can't see it, but it's in there. And it's a watch that looks something like this. So this is a similar model watch as to what is in this plant. So if you create DC pulses onto the human body using a watch, that kind of mimics walking barefoot, which also kind of supports the finding of this technique. So if you walk barefoot, you basically are creating the same effect as a battery powered watch with a second hand does. So electromagnetic DC pulses into biological organisms appear to cause a favorable reaction when in a radio frequency field. So let's take a look at this one. So again, we have a much healthier looking plant. And how do we do, how do we get this one to grow? Let's take a look at its label. So this one is actually getting watered with tea. So there's something about tea that creates radio frequency resistance in plants. So if you drink a cup of tea, or a pot of tea daily, it's likely that you're going to become radio frequency resistant. So these are the techniques that I advise people to use when they're in radio frequency fields. And many, many people are in radio frequency fields today. In fact, the majority of the population in the modern world is in a radio frequency field. You want to find out more about this subject? You'll find it in Toxic Health. Thank you.